Hi there, Cali Spera. Good afternoon. This is amazing Telos, the main town and the ferry port, Levadia. A beautiful sunny day, June 19th. Amazing looking waters. I will definitely jump in them sometime this afternoon. I went for a swim early this morning, was out and about for a little bit, and then uh, went back to the room and hung out there for a bit. And I'm now getting out to explore smack in the uh, middle of the heat without transport. So I need to get a car or a uh, motorbike or a four-wheeler, whatever, is possible either today or tomorrow. I arrived yesterday coming from Niseros Island by boat and have a, a room reserved for three nights, so two more nights. So I have today and tomorrow to explore. It is a small island, but not a tiny island, and so it will be necessary to uh, have a vehicle to see some of the things that I want to see, which includes more than just beaches, including some really amazing sounding ruins, one of which can be hiked to. It is up there. It looks like a really interesting hike and ancient site. Also, there is the hike that I showed yesterday going around the mountain here, which goes to a beach. So uh, let's first find out. Hello, Calimera. Uh, is it your company? Uh, I can help you. Okay, I'm looking for preferably a motorbike. Yes, my friend. Possible? Yes? Uh, you want a small 50cc or 125? The new ones. Yeah, um, now I don't have a uh, motorcycle license. Is that any issue or is both yeah, available? So I think we could only manage only the, the small, one? small one. That's fine, that's fine. Yep. Okay. There is Lavadia, the main town. And we got wheels. It is 10 euros per day. About 11 bucks US. Great deal. Cheaper than a car. As I showed in my previous videos, then I had a car on the island of Niseros, which was 30 euros or about $31.50 US per day, including tax and insurance. So that in itself is a great deal, but 10 bucks. Can't complain. As you saw there, when I mentioned that I didn't have a motorcycle license, he said, okay, well, you can have uh, this bike, the uh, 50cc smaller bike. So that is an issue you will run into in Greece, and it is a bit variable. Sometimes you might be able to get the regular bike. Sometimes they won't rent you a bike at all. And then you have to get a uh, quad or a uh, car. Also for renting a car in Greece, there is a new rule, or it's like five something years old, that you can't rent a car in Greece without an international driver's permit. And so if you're from the United States and various other countries, then get an international driving permit. Now, if you're a European, I believe that this is not an issue. If you have a European license, then you can still just rent a car as regular. But if you're from the US and Canada and other countries outside of Europe, then try to get an international driving permit. It is actually very, very easy. You just go into a AAA office in the United States. It costs $20 and it takes like 15 minutes. It is basically just a translation of your driver's license. So bring your driver's license they will look at that and then they basically give you a booklet that translates the information on your driving license into multiple languages. So definitely worth uh, taking care of that before you come to Europe. You might need it elsewhere as well. All right, let's uh, hop on the bike, head uphill into the heat. So here is a hiking trail to Micro Horio. Micro Horio is the local village the guy that uh, rented me the motorbike here was explaining that basically the people who uh, work in uh, Lavadia, the main port, during the tourist season from, you know, May to October or so, will uh, live and work in the main port there and then move back up to the local village in the winter, Micro Horio. And so there aren't hotels and restaurants and things in the local village because the people tend to make their own meals. But as always, it is interesting to walk through the local villages, see the uh, local life, and also the quiet and peacefulness, which will be the case definitely, especially on a uh, hot afternoon here. But 
here you can see a trail that hikes up to it, and so that is one way to get around the island, at least to certain places, is to uh, get these hiking trails. I saw another one just a little ways back there. All right, so I need to get gas first and then uh, continue the exploring. But man, I'm loving these landscapes. It is definitely intense, the heat, and uh, just classic, classic Greek island, barren, dry, scattered with trees. Not somewhere you want to get lost in the heat of the day. Been there, done that. All right, look at this, folks. This is Ghost Town Lover's Heaven. Check that out. Ancient ruined town sprawled across a hill. So, since I was talking about the local village, I thought, well, I'll go there first since it was nearby. So I thought, I got it wrong. I got uh, two different places confused. So there is Microhorio here and Megalohorio. Megalohorio is the living local village. Horio or Hora means town in Greek. There are many towns on the uh, Greek islands. On the map, it is just called Hora. And so this is Micro Horio. I guess the micro means smaller and Megalohorio larger. So we'll see if that fits as far as the uh, size of the uh, towns. Let's get into it. The history of the city began in the Middle Ages when people, fearing pirate raids, preferred to settle farther from the coast and mainly on a hill, which certainly gave a certain advantage and practically excluded a surprise attack. The settlement of Microhorio formed around a small fortress, Messaria, built on the top of a hill in the second half of the 14th century by the Knights of the Order of St. John, who, having settled on the island, tried to strengthen the old Byzantine fortifications as much as possible and built new ones. For centuries, the town lived its own measured life, but at the beginning of the 20th century, its inhabitants began to gradually leave Microhorio, either to move to the coastal Levadia, where I started the video, and some left the island. By 1960, Microhorio was finally abandoned and turned into a ghost town. The only bright spot that definitely adds color to it is built in 1861, the Snow White Church of Aia Zoni, covered with red tiles and an impressive bell tower. And look at this. Looks like a grinding stone, I would presume. An old ladder, or is that actually back of a chair, it looks like. There is a lot to see here. Look, a uh, watchtower on the top of that hill. And look, it's a ghost in the ghost town or a goat. They sound so similar. And there's the church built in the 19th century. Incredible. No tickets, entrance fee, nobody else here.
Wow, this is definitely one of the best of the ghost towns that I've been to. It is sure looking like there was more than just an abandonment, but an earthquake that wasn't mentioned in the description, but uh, it sure looks like more than just people leaving. Totally destroyed buildings. What is this? Like a little, yeah, church, I guess. Barely a church. Oh, there are frescoes. Wow. It's such a tiny one, but uh, impressive. Colorful images. Obviously, Christian, I wonder what era, if this might go back earlier than the 14th century, when the town was created, could it be possibly Byzantine era? Or very likely just uh, from the same era that the town was originally built. Wow. Very cool to see. So in case you couldn't notice, when I filled up the gas there, how much it cost, it was not cheap. It was two euro 60. However, that is for a liter, not for a gallon. So I put in 10 euros or about $10.50. And that was actually a little bit less than a gallon, right around a gallon. So 10 bucks a gallon, basically very very pricey i didn't notice the price on nisros maybe it was cheaper there because i didn't spend that much on gas in nisros and i had the car for 12 days i only spent maybe 40 euros max in 12 days there isn't much distance to cover of course on these islands and especially on a motorbike then 10 euros will go a long ways. Okay, trying to get up to what looks like kind of a, a castle or a watchtower or something like that on top of the hill here. There was the uh, building over there with the chairs in front. It said, open at 10, 2200, that's 10 p.m. That seems a little late to uh, open your business, but maybe it's a musical venue. There was something that looked kind of like uh, lights or something, or just a bar, not sure. But uh, that would be a very mystical place to uh, sit and have a drink and watch the stars and look out. Well, after 10, you wouldn't be able to see anything, but uh, just to uh, feel the ambiance, the remnants of the uh, town, the ghosts and the goats. Okay, there's the... Uh, Kind of larger tower. All right, so uh, what exactly is that? 
And is there any way to get inside or on top? Let's take a look. It is not looking very easy. No path here. No obvious entrance. But there must be. And the uh, Terrace Hills, I guess, from the time period of the town being alive with life, Maybe that's where they were farming, certainly tending the goats, picking olives. I'm sure that having a garden here is practically impossible, so probably not tomatoes and carrots or whatever, but I don't know. Maybe so. We need to get a lot of water up here somehow. So uh, this is not looking very accessible, no. The wall just continues with no apparent entrance, so maybe from the uh, other side. And so you can get up to it here. But not much of the original structure left, clearly. Look at that massive chunk of wall that has fallen down. So I guess this is probably the main watchtower for the village to look out for those pesky pirates, the pirates of the Caribbean who got lost and ended up in the Mediterranean. Look at this, it's on its side. Another newer building there, the white one. So much more to see here, but I'm ready to uh, get going. I am also starving, looking forward to some good Greek food and showing much more of the island. Two similar yet different symbols here, made from rocks. And finally, we have a church with an unlocked door. A very small one, but it will give you a taste of what is usually inside. There's a key and a latch, and the uh, key is just in the lock there, so. And so there are some paintings, but uh, not of the ancient variety yet in a very similar style as many of the ancient ones. So is this referring to the knights that founded the town? Very likely slaying a dragon there. Again, And again, that seems to be the symbol, the image of the island. Now, is that a dragon or like a griffin or something? I think it's basically also a dragon. And again. Some writing here in Greek. I'm guessing that is the Microhorio, perhaps, and the castle, which I will be going to. It is near the Megalohorio, the local town. So we have here a little shrine, Aios Nectarios, some solar panels, that's a good idea, 
And look at that view. That must be Megalohorio. And I can see the water out there, the other side of the island. And also out there. So we have something else to see that I hadn't heard about. Tracadio Cave. Let's go see if it's open. There's the little church shrine where I was. Megalohorio. And I guess this is the Tracadio Cave. Not sure if it's open yet. Hello. Yes, yes, hello. Calispera. Calispera. It's open? Or? Yes. Okay. So I had heard about the miniature elephants. Look at them. They're really cute. Anthropological remains, skulls from historical antiquity, recovered from the beach rocks of Ayos Antonios Bay. They date to 655 to 57 BC. Wow! Little elephants on a little island. How cool is that? So I guess that is the actual cave where they were discovered. More than 8 meters of sediment have been excavated and over 15,000 bones collected, corresponding to about 45 dwarf elephants. Maximum height, 1.8 meters, so... So that was the cave. I guess the actual cave is somewhere nearby to the museum. And here we have a small and a very old looking little church, I presume, by the shape of it. Probably not much in there, but uh, figure take a quick look. The door is open. Whoa! There are flippin' murals inside there. What in the world? Oh my god, just sitting here. Look at that. A very, very decayed goat. Almost nothing left but the bones and leather. And look at this. Very faded, but very similar style to what you see elsewhere, including Cappadocia, which was occupied by Byzantine Greeks, Christians. That was long before the Ottoman takeover of Anatolia, or modern-day Turkey, from, you know, six, seven hundred AD until the fall of Constantinople in 1453. We are very close to Turkey here. Just a uh, little swim across the water there, across the Aegean. At least a short boat ride. Cappadocia is in central Turkey, so a long ways away, but this entire area was lived in by the uh, Byzantine Greeks. I almost just went by this little church, thought oh, it's just going to be a little empty stone building, which it is, but to come across these old paintings, 
with nobody around, an altar, a goat, was that a sacrifice? Absolutely incredible. So here is Megalo Horio. This way, ancient fortification wall, ancient settlement. That might be it up on the top of the hill up there. But I need to find a beach, get wet, and some food. Let's see if we can find a restaurant on a beach. And looks like maybe mission accomplished. Beautiful bay here. Looks like a mix of sand and rock on the beach. And over here we got a bus stop, restaurant, apartments, traditional cuisine, 100 meters, restaurant, taverna. That's what I'm looking for. I hope they're open. My stomach hopes they're open. Calispera. Taverna open? Excellent.